Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in crypto. Now I'm bringing on bite-sized pieces. So today, this is the thumbnail suggest. If you really want to focus on anything, it's really just this one thing, which is just to be able to, to zoom out about what's going on as far as that Bitcoin ETF that's coming down the pipe, as far as ProShares, which will be launching tomorrow. So we're going to take a look at a couple of data points, take a look at uh, in the details of ProShares Bitcoin ETF. We're going to take a look at some news from Morgan Stanley and uh, El Presidente from El Salvador as he makes a pretty gangster move on uh, on Hanky. And then last, we're going to talk about Russia mining and NFTs. So let's just uh, let's just jump right in. First of all, I will say this: uh, there's been a lot of uh, things going on about this Bitcoin ETF. Everybody's talking about. It. Everybody's really excited. I, however, am not super excited about. It. I think it could do well. It might might be stagnant. Might even do a little bit of uh, negativity. We covered those in the last two videos. So today, what I want to do is just really just give you some solid advice that uh, that I could give. This is investment opinion, of course, on investment advice, but just some advice about the markets in general, not where to put your money, whatever else to do, just to take a, just zoom out. So first of all, let's just take a look at some data points. So data points, we'll start with the most basic of basics, which is what the heck is the market doing? So today it is Monday. Uh, it is the, uh, what is it, 18th? Yeah. And uh, Bitcoin's not doing too bad. Uh, it's up about one and a half percent. It's pretty good. Eight percent for uh, the month, or I'm assuming seven days. So that's pretty great. Um, Ethereum's down over 24 hours. Binance Coin's down or up. Excuse me, up a little bit. Uh, everything's just kind of a little bit of sideways. Here for Dogecoin. Congratulations, all your Dogecoin holders. I don't know what you're seeing it, but great. And uh, 14 percent for Shiba Inu. Also, congratulations. I still don't know. Uh, I, I don't understand that one uh, as well. And then, of course, everybody will tell me in the comments uh, how stupid I am for not understanding Shiba Inu. So, okay, go right ahead. And then uh, that's it. Uh, ooh, 16% for stacks, good for stacks holders. And that's just uh, what's going on in the market. I think we're around, uh, I think we had 2.5 something, 8 trillion, somewhere around there, or 2.52, excuse me, trillion. So I think it was an all-time high, which is fantastic. It hasn't really trickled down in some alts, but uh, Bitcoin's been a heck of a run, but we still haven't seen that 64, 66,000 all-time high. And then we take a look at uh, just some data. I'm going to do a regular view because I you can't get all three of them in there on the view. And the view is, is that we're taking a look at uh, Bollinger Bands, one of the four-hour candles, and it just looks like everything's compressing in the top right here. Um, and you can just tell that over four hours, there hasn't really been a lot of, of action. You see a little bit of, bit of support right here on the green as we uh, bounce from 59.9 to 62. Then we got like a little doji here and there's just some indecision about what's going on. Then you got the RSI right in the middle. So it's not like it's oversold or overbought. So that's fine. And then the MACD, I mean, it switched over uh, back around here, went from a little bit green to the red. And then, but it's just pretty much moving sideways. And because uh, everybody's just kind of sitting on their on their hands, just waiting to see what happens. And I think uh, that can also be stressed if we take a look at longs versus shorts. Now, this one I'm going to blow up so you can see a little bit better. This is uh, BYBT. We can take a look at all the, the longs and the shorts. And you see this period right here that says 24 hours. I put it at 24 hours so you can see an expanded view of, of who is into the longs and of course the longs are in green and who are into shorts and that is in the red and you can see like even with 24 hours you can see that there's a little bit more as far as the shorts go but if you take a look and kind of just drill in again this is not what we're supposed to do we're supposed to be zooming out but if you really want to do it in the last hour or so you'll see there's a little bit more uh short action last 30 minutes or so and the last 15 minutes but that's not really a good indicator. Uh, I like to see over the last 24 hours, see what's going on. And that's what we have. Uh, that's what we have uh, as far as longs and shorts. And um, I even did a little poll and just asked the people, and, this, and we just had almost 2,000, about 1,700 votes. I said, what will Bitcoin's price be with the launch of the ETF tomorrow? And the the bear, the barely winner, I shouldn't say bear, the, the winner that's just eking things out is around 60k ish because i think that's what people are kind of thinking everything is right in the middle you, you can even take a look at the, the sentiment analysis for for bitcoin let me see here let me break down the spotlight sentiment analysis we've, we're still neutral average daily sentiment bitcoin daily sentiment even this little poll which is totally unofficial of course it's a very small sample size but 60k ish now some people thought it would go to 65k some people don't say moon i think people just sometimes just click on moon because it's funny but uh, 26, 36, 39. So yeah, it's right in the middle, maybe below 55K. So maybe a little bit on, on the bearish side, but people really 
are just kind of sitting back on, I don't know about this one, and for the reasons that we talked about before. So it is just something to consider. And what I also want to take a look at real quick is, is ProShares, and this is who actually got approved by the SEC for this uh, futures ETF. And I will tell you this, if you go to their website, ProShares.com, probably the ugliest uh, website I've seen since 1997. Uh, this one does not give me much faith as far as like the streamlined look of everything. I mean, nothing against them. They're like, you know, they, they deal with billion dollar uh, uh, ETFs and funds and they know that they don't need my advice, but uh, just doesn't look, just looks like something from like the, the late 90s, early 2000s. Anyhow, if you click on Bitcoin strategy ETF, let me blow this up so you can see it. Uh, the add a value Bitcoin strategy ETF. Here we go. So it says right here very clearly this fund does not invest directly in Bitcoin, just so you know. And then if you uh, open up, you can do an overview of performance and quote and daily holdings, all that stuff. If you look at uh, the fact sheet, it says very clearly right here. And I, I have to commend them for their, their disclaimer. And I'll get to that in a second. It's pretty funny. Whoa, it says like this. Uh, the ProShare Bitcoin strategy ETF is the first U.S. Bitcoin ETF designed to provide investment results that generally correspond to the performance of Bitcoin. The fund seeks to provide capital appreciation primarily through managed exposure to Bitcoin futures contracts. The fund does not invest directly in Bitcoin. And if we go all the way down, let me bring this up so you can see a little better. It states here, uh, the value, I love this, of an investment in the ETF could decline significantly and without warning, including the zero, you should be prepared to lose your entire investment. You got to love that. That's a that's a solid disclaimer right there. The ETF uh, invests in Bitcoin futures contracts. The ETF does not invest directly in or hold Bitcoin. The price performance of Bitcoin futures should be expected to differ from the current spot price of Bitcoin. And these differences could be significant and so on and so forth. So uh, that was just uh, from ProShares, just so we can get like a brief overview about what's going on, which is supposed to launch tomorrow. And we'll see exactly how it goes. And the big thing I just wanted to make mention uh, is of this. It really doesn't matter what happens tomorrow. I don't think we're going to go down to 20K like some people think. Uh, and then, and I, I garnish that, that information from uh, James over Invest Answers. He talks about once Bitcoin slides, you know, below, gosh, I think he was talking about uh, 55 or 57. He goes, it just gets bought up immediately by everybody else and just keeps going up. Or not up, at least up a little bit. So uh, if you just look at these things of what's going to happen, Really, who cares? Um, to me, I'm just going to sit back and uh, see what happens. But it's not the big story. And it's not really what's going on. Because tomorrow, it might be lackluster. It might have some huge implications. It might go up and it might go down. But in reality, you're super early to this space. And uh, usually, just holding a little bit will be okay. And uh, that's the best thing I can sell for you. Just when in doubt, zoom out. If we take a look at the price history of Bitcoin over time, um, we're super early. I think we're going to have some fireworks later on. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And let's uh, let's expand on that a little bit about as far as like who, where are we going with a couple of stories from uh, Morgan Stanley and uh, President from El Salvador. So Morgan Stanley, and this was, I think we covered this uh, a couple of days ago, actually. The CEO says Bitcoin's not a fad. Uh, crypto is not going away. And this is a this is directly inverse of what was going on in 2017. Now we've got uh, these big money players going, yeah, this is good. Morgan Stanley CEO James Gorman talked about Bitcoin and crypto during the bank's third quarter earnings call with analysts Thursday. So with all of his, with the earnings call, all the people that uh, are within that circle, he says, look, I've said it publicly before. I'll say it again. I don't think crypto is a fad. I don't know what the value of Bitcoin should or shouldn't be, but these things aren't going away. And that's from a person who's in traditional finance and been there for a very long time. So it gives us, I don't really care so much about like what an individual says, but it's the weight that it gives the people that listen to that person. So like in this situation, uh, this would be a lot of people who are like involved in Morgan Stanley, traditional finance, who are sitting on the sidelines going, you know what? I don't really trust Bitcoin, but I trust the CEO here. He's done pretty well by me so far, uh, debatable. Uh, so maybe I should get into Bitcoin. That's what it's all about. And then also that leads me to my next point. When you're looking at people who, who are looked up to in the traditional finance, uh, Steve Hankey here is an economist at uh, John Hopkins, senior fellow and director, uh, Project Cattle Institute, FX and Commodity Traeger, uh, Reagan White House, views around. This guy carries a lot of weight, economist, right? And uh, I've got nothing against Steve. 
But he said this, uh, there was this great uh, tweet that he put out on bah, 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 September 23rd, uh, 2021, where he states, uh, Bukele, who is the president of El Salvador, is playing fast and loose with El Salvador's tax dollars again. After Bitcoin's prices tumbled to a six-week low, Bukele bought 150 more coins and proudly said that we just bought the dip. With Bukele at the helm, ELSL faces financial ruin, which sounds awful, right? And when you hear that, when some people hear that from like an economist and they maybe are in that circle, they think like, yeah, that's right. I knew it the whole time. Well, now we get to say the exact opposite and not just me, El Presidente said, hey, you were saying, which is a great uh, little, just a nice little passive aggressive swipe gangster move at Steve Hankey going, you know what? Eight weeks ago or nine weeks ago or six weeks ago, uh, when uh, Bitcoin's around 40,000 or so, something like that, uh, 45, 47, and now we're at uh, 60, 61. When we bought that dip, well, guess what? Every El Salvadorian who is holding Bitcoin is up massively as compared to the dollar. How do you like them apples? So for me, I'm like, this is just a good thing as a reminder. So you can't let people get away with things as far as like what they said, hold their feet to the fire. And I like that. And then on to our, our last two stories, which I think is... Uh, will play out a little bit more as time goes on, as far as like where we're going. Russia and Belarus moved to introduce special electricity tariffs for crypto miners. And this is just a real quick snippet. Um, and it makes sense. The idea has been backed by the Russian Ministry of Energy to actually take the Bitcoin miners or cryptocurrency miners and go, you can't pay the same rates that households do. Crypto miners should not pay for the electricity that used at the rates intended for households. He states, to maintain the reliability and quality of power supply, we believe it's necessary to exclude the possibility of electricity consumption by miners at tariffs for the population. I think this is going to play a bigger role later down the road because there is a lot of problems right now with electricity, especially in China and their, um, their lack thereof of producing coal and the electricity usage that they have, which is, I think, a pretty good indicator of why they kicked out the Bitcoin miners. Like, look, you guys are sucking up all the different uh, of, uh, of electricity. Of course, there's probably other factors, but you're sucking up a lot of electricity for our residents, for our citizens. So get out and go someplace else. And I think as we go other places and they go to Belarus and to Russia and then into Kazakhstan and then into North America and then into Texas, even those areas, I think renewables are going to have to be used a lot more. But remember this, the more renewables they use, it's still the more electricity they use. So I think... There's going to have to be something going on as far as like proof of work uh, to maybe go a little bit in a different direction or whatnot. Maybe proof of stake is the answer, or maybe, in all honesty, we need to actually just have them self-contained so uh, everybody can stop complaining about the electricity because, let's be honest, it does use a little bit of electricity, but of course, so do banks, so does government, so does everybody else. Anyhow, that is it for that section. Let me know what you think, and then we'll, we'll uh, just finish up with the NFT section. And this is from a friend of the show, Ada Ape, and uh, he's gone through with uh, the NFT of Wild Warriors. This is going to be a, uh, a new project uh, built on Cardano or minted on Cardano. So, you know, if you're into NFTs, this is something to look at uh, as far as what is going on, because what's great about this is that you don't have those, uh, those huge gas fees. And there's gonna be some other things going down the pipe as far as like getting into this NFT, uh, project which is going to launch in the next two or three days somewhere around there maybe four or five it's uh, you got a couple time a little bit of time but if you get into this one here then there's going to be other rewards down the road one of those is being uh, as far as like when other projects come about you get massive discounts or just free ones coming about and all those things will so I will put that in the uh, uh, description of this video so you can check out wild warriors you can see mine uh, on the bottom left hand corner that's actually not mine I just did a screenshot of that one and then lastly, <clears throat> or next to last, Ryan Crypto, Ryan D Crypto. I've got, uh, if you want to know about NFTs, the next big thing, I can't cover everything, right? I mean, I try to dabble into it and there's some good stuff, but this guy, uh, he's got a very few subscribers, 15, 14.9. And uh, he covers a lot of great things about NFTs. If you're looking for the, the really like new projects and things that are going on or helping you to explain, this is like, there's no, like, he's one of the few that really explains it in a calm, rational manner. So I will link, uh, he is actually going to be in the description of all my videos now. 
in the uh, all the YouTubers I recommend. So check him out at the very bottom. And then lastly, 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 I will say this. My goals aren't your goals, okay? And uh, when we're talking about these things, as far as like, you know, where are things going as far as Bitcoin? Well, it really comes down to this. What can Bitcoin do for you? That's the big thing. Are you going to hold on to it forever and just uh, say, hey, I've got a, I've got a, a half a Bitcoin, a quarter of a Bitcoin or, or 20 Bitcoins or 100 Bitcoins? Uh, but what does it do for you? So at some point, you have to remember that crypto in general is if you're investing into it, the investment must work for you and your goals and whatever they are. And um, if just holding on to, to crypto is your thing, that's your thing. But uh, as time goes on, and you probably think about selling and maybe buying a house or buying another investment property or, or buying a car for your kid or, or putting some, something away as far as like assets or, or doing whatever it is, because again, everybody's goals are different. It really depends on what you want to do. And I think that crypto isn't here to be held on forever because you have to understand what is it doing for you? Maybe at some point down the future, uh, you can actually be uh, using it to, to pay for all types of different things. But at some point, you're going to have to use that crypto to pay for things or sell that crypto to pay for things or take a loan out against it to pay for those things. And then the real thing comes down to if you're here right now, you're super early. What happens if this all goes crazy and you become a millionaire, multimillionaire, 10 million, 20 million. I mean, who knows? So um, I made this, I had this blog post out and uh, just want to link at the very end because really it's money and crypto and all the things that are, all, the, all these units, they're really just coming out of freedom units. And it's all that, the things that uh, you can do with them. I've got, I had some pretty bad news lately and I'll share that with everybody later. But, um, I'm glad that uh, all the, the investments that I do allows me to do the things that I need to do to put the people around me in a better position. So I just remind everybody that uh, it's not just about holding on forever. It's about making the right decision for you and the people around you. All right, so that's it. So look, uh, if you like that video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Uh, if you made it this far, thanks so much. I appreciate it. And uh, that is it. So I appreciate uh, you sticking around. See you on the next one.